things. And now you can preview the cost of your scripts before you fill with Walgreens' new Medicare prescription copay quote. And that's kind of a big deal. Walgreens, at the corner of... Quote subject to change in the world one for some of your day plans. Remember, put your plans to two months in the next. What are you going to smoke that? Nope. You are. Hell if I am, bro. Jesus Christ. I don't know, man. I don't know. This is my job. This is your job. I can't do that. Smoke. Huh. Instead of test, just take a look. Where the fuck is messed up, you guys? Flying in. They can fly in. Kiss my ass radio. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of Abe can here. Can you fix this mic, please? We're working on it. There it is. Okay. Don't move. Hold it like that. Press the show. No problem. We can do that. The upscale and advanced studios of JVC Broadcast. That was the best. Whose box is that? No. It's the base. I think it's got a bed. Um, can I one, get... one of the wires is busted in the headset. Is it our box or? No, it's not, the, it's not the box. It's the headset. Just give me a headset. I just went out last week. Just grab a different headset. And the high quality headsets of Kiss My Ass right. Radio. JVC <laughs> Broadcast. Well, because Adam just doesn't like to solve the problem. Last week we had this problem. We didn't have this problem last week. Last week we had this problem. Good morning. Good morning. That was funny. No, I know. It was a really fun Super show. Car week. Super car week. <laughs> With Soaring Supercars. They dropped the ball. Yes, it's so totally lame. Lame. They had four cars there. It was you know, awful. Honest. Mm -hmm. A plethora of drivers to talk to. It was awful. Yes. Oops, is that mine? Yes, it is. Wow. Yeah. Well, I figure when you put on vibrate, it turns the volume down. No. Unfortunately not. We've got a very exciting show for you today. Omar Fries of Fratello Cigars is going to be our meet your maker. Fries. Fries? I guess it's yes to do. Nobody the the Frias. Alright, the Frias. Will Cooper of CigarCoop.com, the host of Story Geeks, is going to be here to talk to us about what's going on in the world of Cigar Coop. Ah, there's a plethora of information. We just came out with a very extensive list of any of the 20 any of our projects and different things going on in the world of cigars and, the, you know, top makers, top people, interesting things like that. So it's going to be a fascinating discussion with Cigar Coop. And in a couple of segments, we're talking about lip service and tech talk today. They're saying it's audio clipping still on Periscope, just to give you a heads up. Audio clipping? Mm -hmm. uh, What's Colin, it, Colin saying something? No. 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 Colin's <laughs> anything. Is that light supposed to be red or green? It's supposed to be, that's, it's supposed to be flickering like that. Flickering? Okay. Yeah. It should be fine. Crackling. It's crackling. I don't know what anything is. Well, everything's broken. Yeah, you know. And there goes, there goes my sound in my headphones. Yeah. There you go. You let go. Oh, wait, oh, wait, almost there. Twist a little bit. Put your left arm up. Yeah, like that. Hold it like this. Almost. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Fantastic. Do we got another pair of headphones? No, I lost it completely. No, it's over there. Gra John, yeah, grab that pair of headphones. Just grab that. Here, put, put that on, John. Give me that thing over there. We'll go from there. You'll be able to just hear me out of the one ear. You can hear. Yeah, there you're you good. Go. Okay, yeah. fantastic. There we go. Everybody's happy now. All right, so every week on Kiss by Ash Radio, we like to give away a lot of great things. We've got a great new way of doing that with our Zycard giveaway. All you have to do is post a picture this week of the first thing you would have bought had you won the lottery. The lottery. Yeah. You won the first thing you would have bought. The first thing you would have bought. Um, man, I might have gone and bought out like all the pets. Um, toys and stuff for my dog and then at the same time go straight to the mall and buy like a l really nice Louis Vuitton bag that I want okay but that's I don't know like my dog I think of first toys I'd bring him home like 50 giant bones 
Once again, I would like to bring up the inappropriate relationship with you and your dog. No, it's like I just want to take care of him. He loves that kind of stuff. Mm. Uh, what would you buy? Uh, first thing I'd buy is a lawyer. <laughs> a real good lawyer. Exciting. Adam? Uh, a really, 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 really expensive bourbon. <laughs> That's fun. I'm, you know what? I might buy a brewery. Yeah. It'd be fun. That would be fun. It would be a lot of interesting. So make sure you go on Facebook and post a photo of the first thing you would have purchased had you won the lottery. And if you, we select your comment as the one we like the best or just randomly, you're going to be able to take home a VX cutter from our good friends over at Zycar. Also, every week, we post a poll on our Facebook page. It is the KMA Recluse Poll of the Week. And if you comment on this poll, you can win a five-pack of cigars. This week's po Last week's poll, we asked you, have you already broken your New Year's resolution? Yes. 57% of you said no. I broke mine the next day. <laughs> Forty-three percent of you said yes. So <laughs> the it's almost pretty close there on who has and has not broken their New Year's resolutions. And if you go and check out the KMA Facebook page, you can see the winner there in the comment section. And also, you can check out our new poll of the week. If you won the Powerball, would you have shown up for work the next day? Yes, to put in my two weeks' notice. I might have called in sick, but I probably showed up the second day. I mean, you so show up the first day. Mm -hmm. Adam would have come to work on. I won the Powerball yesterday. I'm yeah. here. Yeah, I'm here. Hmm. I don't know what I'm going to do. It's a lot of money. Yeah. This is true. This might all be something that would actually happen. So make sure you go check out the KMA Facebook page, and you can participate in this week's poll, this week's KMA Recluse Poll of the Week. And you can take home a five-pack of cigars from our good friends at Recluse. We're also going to have my good buddy, uh, Jeff B. Borschwitz, is going to be on uh, during the show today. going to talk about his new mega store he opened up in Tampa. Mm -hmm. uh, Davidoff, uh, an official Davidoff store. It's like huge, like 5,000 square feet. And I believe the store is open for business now. Our good buddy, actually, Mark, our good buddy, the number one fan, Mark Williams, mm -hmm. is actually working there. Um, but uh, the bar, I think, is going to be open in February, so uh, we'll talk to Jeff about that later on, and hopefully maybe get him to I'm interested get him do a live remote out there when the bar's, yeah, when the bar's open. Yeah. When the bar's open. When I'm the bar's open. I'm sure he's got a lot of fun stories about trying to get that store open. It's going to have to have been a bit of a struggle. Well, I think it was supposed to be open last November, so it's always a story when you're building stuff. Oh, just never want to build things. and Contractors. <laughs> yes. Great people. Awesome. Uh, so we're going to talk John the producer into Tech Talk. A lot of great stuff is coming up. So, we're, is it that time? No, oh, we got uh, our audio clips. Outlander. Well, actually, I'd like to talk about it on my little Facebook rant yesterday because you're a woman. I'd like to get your perspective on it. Oh, okay. I try to avoid these Facebook rants. Mm -hmm. Okay, because I mean, most I, obviously, listen, most people who are using Facebook to uh, voice their views and opinions. Most of them don't have like an IQ of 12, so there's really no point entering a debate, but actually... Well, as I've said for many years, the internet, giving voices to stupid <laughs> people since Brutal. Al Gore invented it. Brutal. But, um, actually, one of my friends, mm -hmm. who has no children, right, posted this video that guys posted, it, it was a social, it was a social test. This guy and this woman went into public places mm -hmm. to purposely breastfeed a baby in public, you know, putting her breast completely out in malls and bus stops, or wherever it would be public just to get people's reaction. Right. First off, I think it was a setup video because even the acting of the people was, it was so bad. Right. You know, but, you know, I put, you know, every woman on there, oh, women should feed her baby whatever she wants, wherever she wants, and all this stuff was going on. You see all this, these people freaking out, and I just posted on there, and then it became a heated debate. Look, I think part of the world today, part of the problem in the world today is everybody just so inconsiderate. It's my feelings that matter, and I don't give a crap about anybody else's feelings, even if it's something simple. So I just put on there and said, look, my wife had four kids and breastfed each one for a year. Mm -hmm. We traveled, she took business trips, did everything, right? And not one time ever did she have to pull her breast down in public to breastfeed the baby. Now, Game soapbox alert. Game soapbox alert. <laughs> 
I mean, look, like, two minutes late on that, but it's it, a call. Yeah, it, but it's true. You know, I mean, she had to feed the baby. She always carried a shawl around her, and we, which we went everywhere. It wasn't inconvenient. It was a very simple thing. And I'm not saying, look, I'm all, I'm all for seeing a free booby here and there. I got mm -hmm. no problem with it socially. But the problem is there are people who just aren't raised in that environment, aren't comfortable with public nudity. And it's not about just feeding the baby. You can put a shawl and feed the baby. You know, if you have to, that's one thing. But it's so easy to just be considerate, throw a shawl over your shoulder, and breastfeed your baby. But th these women, all, they, they all torched me. Like, you know, I was, you know like, you, oh, yeah, you I was the most evil thing in the world, you know. It's like, no, I'm not. You just don't have to do it. If you had to do it, if you're stuck on a subway train for four hours or a train ride and you forgot your shawl, yeah, by all means, feed your baby. No one should care. But I'm just saying it's just so easy to not have to do that. It was just my little soapbox. I mean, you're a woman. Now, you don't have children yet, and you haven't breastfed. And obviously, the, 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 I'm, I'm my other friend who started the post hasn't had kids, so she's never breastfed. <laughs> I, I I personally I don't teach his own, but me personally I would always have a shawl or do something or go privately in the bathroom or somewhere. I mean, look, my, the point is I wasn't saying that you should hide mm -hmm. or that you have to hide. You know, just cons be considerate. It's it just not that hard to respect those few people or that percentage of people who just aren't comfortable with it. Yes, for the lady who probably made the original post and probably not there, we understand. You're trying to get attention and you're not getting it anywhere else in life. So let's make a crazy post oh. about breastfeeding. <laughs> oh, I, other than that, I'm not going to touch it with a 10 foot pole. Oh, I think if they had a rope, they would have lynched me on Facebook. Uh, it's fantastic. But that has been Abe's Soap's Box comment of the week. You know see of Facebook <laughs> and public breastfeeding. <laughs> uh, when we come back, we're going to talk about cigar news. We're going to play a little game called Bowie or Bowie. We'll see what that's all about. And we're going to talk to Omar De Fries. Bowie or Bowie? Bowie or Bowie. I didn't come up with it. I just read the questions. We blame John, the producer, for all of this craziness. <laughs> all right. We hope you're keeping it lit, America. And when we come back, we will too. So keep it lit. Follow us on Twitter at Kiss My Ash Radio. Yes, it's mandatory. The story that made the cigar. The cigar that made history. 80 years ago, Monte Cristo began a legacy of grifting only the finest cigars. Now, that legacy is honored by the very special, extremely limited edition Monte Cristo 80th Anniversary Cigar. Crafted for the first time, Dominican Pelotico Tobacco. Grown from seeds hand-carried from Cuba by Pepe Mendez. This exclusive cigar is like no other. Rolled in a dark and oily Ecuadorian Sumatra wrapper. Monte Cristo 80th Anniversary Cigar. Features a rich, fuller body and wonderfully complex smoke. Packaged in an elegant handmade box, these exceptional cigars are available now at your local tobacconist. Honor the legacy of the Monte Cristo 80th Anniversary. Surgeon General Warning. Cigar smoking can cause cancers of the mouth and throat, even if you do not inhale. Zycar, the world leader in cigar accessories, has done it again. One of their best lighters is now even better. The popular Enigma Double Jet Flame Lighter is now the new Enigma 2. Complete with a new clean design, this lighter was re-engineered for dependability and performance. It feels more ergonomic in your hand and new internal components give it the horsepower you need. Like everything Zycar, this comes with the incredible lifetime warranty. Zycar for life. Since the dawn of time, the universe has been constantly evolving. Now experience the evolution of flavor. Sindicato Cigars, available in Ecuadorian shade-grown Corojo and San Andres Maro wrappers, are beautifully crafted by master blender Arsenio Ramos. Using a double-leaf binder and meticulously box-pressed, Sindicato Cigars provide the perfect draw to deliver the evolved flavors you won't soon forget. Visit SindicatoCigars.com to find your nearest authorized dealer of Sindicato Cigars. From the makers of the number one cigar in the USA in 2013, the Aging Room Quattro F55, comes yet another highly rated cigar, the Aging Room Bin Number no. 1, a full-bodied Dominican cigar made with some of the world's oldest tobacco in the market today, from the harvest of 1997, 98, and 99. It starts out smooth and builds up in strength and flavor until it reaches its full potential, the Aging Room Bin Number no. 1. For the true connoisseur, looking for a sophisticated smoking experience with balance, complexity, and character, Aging Room Cigars, blending is in our DNA. 
Every recluse cigar is created to smash the perception that a cigar needs to be Cuban to be exceptional. Recluse cigars experience the finest manufacturing techniques in the world. Every recluse cigar is flavorful, smooth, and delivers an effortless draw every... Man, shut up! Stay down, chump! People, you don't have to listen to this garbage. Go get yourself a recluse cigar and do it today. I said stay down! Quality and value are always the two biggest determining factors for consumers when making buying decisions. Casa Bella by Sindicato Cigars offers superior flavor, quality construction, and an affordable everyday price. Completely handmade in the Dominican Republic, these value-priced, smooth yet flavorful cigars are comprised of Dominican and Nicaraguan filler tobaccos, and they're available in natural and Maduro wrappers. Visit SindicatoCigars.com to find your nearest authorized dealer of Casa Bella Cigars. Welcome back to Kiss My Ash Radio with Honest Abe, Adam K, the Breemeister, and the lovely Lady M. Welcome back to Kiss My Ash Radio. I am Adam K. The Brewmeister. With me, of course, the incomparable Honest Abe and the lovely Lady M. And we are broadcasting live here from Palm Beach Gardens, Florida. And it is time for a little cigar news. What's in the box? We got a box. We got a box. What? We got a box. I'm going to open it. Look at it. Oh, what's in the box? Let's ask Honest Abe. Cigar news. Cigar News. This week with Tetuaje, Pete Johnson of Tetuaje Cigars announced this week that his famous Tetuaje Black Label, which currently has been one regular production for Tola, will be now a five size line as of this summer. The five sizes are Petit Robusto, Petit Lancero, Corona Gorda, Casadores, and Grand Toro. The Petit Lancero is currently available as a regular production, and Johnson released the Corona Gorda as recently as 2014. Black Label is a Nicaraguan Puro with a sun-grown Criollo wrapper from Esteli and Nicaraguan fillers. Pricing is not yet finalized, but it should make a lot of people very, very happy. Obviously, you started out as just an event cigar only, yep. and people were going nuts trying to get it, and uh, this should make a lot of folks very happy. Absolutely. Hopefully, the quality and production keeps up for a long time, and everyone can continue to enjoy it for many years to come. LaFleur Dominicana and the NFL playoffs are forming up as LaFleur is the unofficial cigar for the Super Bowl. This week, the company will begin shipping the LaFleur Dominicana Football Special Edition 2016 to retailers in California. The 5 and 5 Ace by 54 Perfecto features an Ecuadorian Habano wrapper with a football made out of Connecticut seed tobaccos right there on the top. Just a little football shape right in the top of your cigar. It's kind of cool looking. Pricing is set at $12, and the LFD Football Special Edition 2015 comes in a box of 10 and is only available in California because that's where they're playing the big game this year from Levi's Stadium in San Francisco. Levi's looked, looked really cool. I California. Did. <coughs> it's a pretty cool looking thing. I mean, for the occasion, Give it's pretty it. cool. <coughs> so bad. All right, Mo- Moya Ruiz, boutique cigar maker Moya Ruiz Cigars, is throwing its hat into the limited edition cigar ring this St. Patrick's Day, or rather, a pickle jar. Beginning the week of March 7th, 50 cigar retailers will start to receive the Moya Ruiz's special St. Patrick's Day Candela cigar dubbed Pickle Juice. Pickle Juice will be a limited release Toro measuring 6 by 50 and it will be packed not in conventional cigar boxes but in plastic 13 count containers that resemble a pickle jar. These cigars are rolled at the Espinosa La Zona factory in Esteli, Nicaragua. I mean, pickle juice has to be like the nastiest thing you can almost think of. <laughs> it's a, it's a pickle it's juice. It's an interesting choice. Coming off the Chinese finger trap. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Price increase. All to this USA is informed its retailers it will be adjusting prices on a number of its products as of February 1st. With a mixture of increase and decreases that retailers will see in the coming weeks. The cause of the increases can be attributed to the ongoing rising cost of raw materials, manufacturing, and logistics. Uh, over 250 SKUs are being affected, but not all are increasing. Around 190 
most of the company's portfolio, which includes brands like HM and Monte Cristo, Romeo, and Julieta, will increase compared to the 2015 price, price list, with almost all increases between 1% and 3% for non-bundled premium cigars. Last year, Ottinger Davidoff announced the acquisition of 25% of its Asian distribution company, Blue Bell Cigars. This week, the company announced it was executing an option to acquire the majority stake in Blue Bell. As a result of the acquisition, Blue Bell will now be renamed to Davidoff of Geneva, mm. Asia. So it's just a distribution company that probably distributed their own products. Exactly. Yeah, makes sense. Absolutely. It's good for them to get into the Asian, growing Asian market. I'm sure the Chinese love the Davidoffs. Uh, Laurent de Rogmont, who is a managing director of Bluebell, will serve as senior vice president in the new Davidoff of Asia. Regent will report to Unger Davidoff CEO Hans Christian Hosgard and will serve on Davidoff's global management group. So, big things come out of Davidoff moving in the Asian market. It'll be an exciting time for that to happen. And now we're going to play a little game since we lost the great artist David Bowie this week. <laughs> John Baran thought it'd be a good idea to play a little game called Bowie or Bowie. Well, yeah, he wanted, he's always really nifty because he was calling it Bowie or Bowie, not even knowing that it's he's pronounced Jim Bowie. Yes, this is either going to be... And then try to justify it for like 30 minutes, trying to tell me. It can be Bowie or Bowie. This can be David Bowie, the musician, of an English fan, great guy, or Frontiersman Jim Bowie. All right. This one's left pupil is permanently dilated after being punched in the eye by his friend, George Underwood. Is that Bowie or Bowie? I'm going to say Bowie. It's definitely Bowie. Yeah, they went to school it. together. Yes, it is definitely Bowie. They're in a band together, actually. Mm -hmm. Dragon something, I forgot what it was called. John will probably know. Mm -hmm. He's a musician. This one had a younger brother. The two of them were notorious for fighting with locals. Bowie. I don't think Bowie had a brother. I'm going to say uh, uh, Jim Bowie. That is Bowie, yes. This one turned down two big British honors, knighthood and becoming a commander. Bowie. What, which is that? Bowie. It's got to be Bowie. <laughs> There's no knighthood back there. That's the stupidest question ever. There was no knighthood back in the Alamo days. <sighs> so true. Nothing to be talking about it. Yeah. Uh, his first wife, Josepha, died. Struck with grief, he took to drinking heavily and sequestered himself for some time. Bowie or Bowie? Bowie. That is, I'm going to say that Bowie was married to Iman, the yeah, actress. So, the, yeah, the model, yeah. So, I'm going to say it's Jim Bowie. It is Bowie. This one claims he had a horrible incident with a cup of tea when he was five and refused to drink it to this day. Bowie. That's without a doubt, Bowie. Not to mention if you re read the question like, refused to drink it to this day. <laughs> Obviously, it would definitely be that. All right, that was another fantastic idea from John Baran. Ladies and gentlemen, make sure Bowie. you send Bowie. all of your, co <laughs> your comments to John Baran at kissmyashradio.com. When we come back, we're going to talk to Omar DeFries of Fratello Cigars. We're going to see what's happening in his world. Make sure you're out there keeping it lit. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of fine cigars. You're listening to Kiss My Ash Radio. Perfecting a seed for over 40 years takes skill. And again, so does growing the perfect beard. Take it from Matt Booth, member of Camacho's Board of the Bold and the owner of the infamous Room 101 brand. The Camacho Corojo is hand-built from authentic Corojo seeds. Built for the expert palate and fine-tuned for maximum flavor impact, consistency, and quality. Since their humble beginnings in 1998, Drew Estate has believed that the production floor is the crossroads between art and passion and where the real magic takes place. Drew Estate master blender Roy Herrera has crafted a unique medium body line extension that is creamy, lush, and ultra smooth and finished off with a flawless shade wrapper that delivers satisfaction in spades. Continuing the story from their factory floor, it is with great bravado that the Drew Estate presents Underground Shade, a true experience. Look, ever
everyone knows working out sucks. Getting healthy and in shape was easy, everyone would be doing it. But imagine an environment where workouts were specially designed for dramatic physical changes. Where you have personal supervision of a certified trainer and a group of supportive, like-minded individuals working alongside you, constantly motivating you to do your best. This is why CrossFit has swept the nation. Check out CrossFitChrome.com for our newest location in Boynton Beach and see how you can get your first month for only $29. That's CrossFitChrome.com. Eat, sleep, chrome, repeat. You know, when it comes to a recluse cigar, I have often heard people say, Recluse made me smarter. Recluse made me more confident. Recluse cigars made me a chick magnet. While the accuracy of their statements is questionable, when it comes to yours truly, that's 100% me, baby. So do yourself and those around you a favor and pick up a recluse cigar for yourself or someone who definitely needs it. And do it today! Results may vary. It's that time of year again, and the Quesada Oktoberfest is back. This full-flavored Dominican Puro is blended to pair with your favorite Oktoberfest beers, brewed annually for the famous German festival. Quesada Oktoberfest is available only during the fall. So grab a beer and a few of these delicious cigars before they sell out. Quesada Oktoberfest, the only cigar on the market made specifically to pair with beer. Proust. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of fine cigars. You're listening to Kiss My Ash Radio. Awarded the 2014 Nicaraguan Cigar of the Year. With numerous 90 plus ratings, the Perdomo 20th Anniversary Cigar celebrates Tobacco Road Perdomo's 20 years as one of Nicaragua's largest premium cigar manufacturers. Using one of the best premium tobaccos grown exclusively by the Perdomo family, the 20th Anniversary Cigar has a tremendous profile with layer upon layer of rich, elegant, complex flavors. Visit your nearest authorized tobacconist today and experience the masterful blend of these Nicaraguan puros. Now available in extremely limited edition pyramid size in Sunday and Maduro. Hi, this is Rocky Patel, and I'd like to invite you to try one of our Decade Cigars. This premier cigar received a 95 rating from Cigar Aficionado, one of the highest ratings ever afforded by that magazine. It's a beautiful Ecuadorian Sumatra wrapper with fillers from Nicaragua and Honduras. This cigar is medium to full-bodied, rich, complex, yet elegant and well-balanced. I promise you, you're going to love the Decade. Try it. Welcome back to Kiss My Ash Radio with Honest Abe, Adam K, the Bremeister, and the lovely Lady M. Bad with and spice. There we go. What you doing now, Bad Boy? Welcome back to Kiss My Ash Radio. I'm the Bremeister, with the Bremeister. Bringing us back in a very in space. Uh, with me, of course, the incomparable Honest Abe and the lovely Lady M. We are here keeping it lit in the heart of Palm Beach Gardens on a beautiful Saturday morning. I think we need a fireplace in here. That chill? Oh, I'm so cold. Uh, and now, it's time for what we consider to be my favorite part of the show. I want all of you to get up out of your chairs. I want you to get up right now and go to the window, open it, and stick your head out and yell. It's time to meet your maker. This week on Kiss My Ash Radio, we are pleased to welcome back Omar DeFries of Fratello Cigars. Omar, thank you for being here on a Saturday and taking time out of your schedule to join us today. We greatly appreciate it. How are things in your world doing? Guys, thank you for having me. This is the second time in, uh, since that uh, first show that we uh, that we did a couple of, uh, I think it was a year and a half ago. So I'm glad to, uh, I'm glad to be back with you guys, with your listeners. And uh, So thank you for having me. Everything is fantastic. How's everything with you guys? We are here keeping it lit in Palm Beach Gardens and having a wonderful time. So... Omar, tell us a little bit what went on. For Tell Us Cigar, he's kind of had an interesting year in 2015. Give us some of the give us some of the bullet point highlights. It was it was a very interesting year, guys. Uh, we uh, we uh, we had the we had the, the we had the launch of uh, of our of our first uh, um, of our first uh, blend. Uh, you know that basically is complementing uh, our Fratello line, which is the Fratello Bianco. Uh, that was that uh, we released that in uh, June of 2015, a month prior to the IPCPR show. We rolled it out in uh, 
eight of our, eight, you know, some eight of our, you know, brick and mortars around the Washington, D.C. area. Um, and it was unbelievably successful. It allowed us to get, you know, to the show with a little bit of momentum. Um, and the show was amazing for us. I mean, we had, uh, we completely sold out by the second day of, uh, of the uh, of the allotment that we had for uh, the IPCPR, which wasn't small, so obviously great show for us. Um, I had a great time in Vegas, and last year, in this last year as well, we also had a, our first limited release, which happened uh, uh, towards November timeframe uh, this past year, and uh, it was great. It was a little, you know, five pack of cigars that it's uh, <clears throat> it's not the common limited release that you see in this industry. You see. A limited release of a uh, particular cigar. This time I just did a limited release, you know, following one of the lines that we currently have, which is the Fratello Boxer. Um, and uh, we basically followed that line, did four box press cigars, which are not part of our portfolio. And, um, and people loved it. We sold out and it was great. And so we closed out uh, 2015 with uh, all the bells and whistles. That's fantastic. You know, the Boxer has been getting a lot of real interesting press and in, since its release how would you describe the blend itself and the profile that's the boxer it, what it is so the boxer is pretty unique the boxer um it's 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 the exact same wrapper binder and filler as the original line the only changes are the proportion of the fillers uh we started playing with the proportions of the filler increasing a little bit more of the uh um, the Viso from Peru that our cigar has. We played a little bit with the uh, Estelle Ligero that, that, that basically, you know, in the position of what we put on the header and stuff like that. And it was amazing. I mean, it was exact same wrapper of binder and filler, but the proportions of the, the proportions of the filler are entirely different from the proportions of the original line. Um, becoming one of my best selling cigars in the U.S. right now. So it, it's, it's been, it's been amazing. That's a reality. Well, I gotta be honest with you, the highlight of 2015 for me was watching you do Dancing with the Stars at Dave Garofalo's shop in New Hampshire. <laughs> that was, you see, you see that the was the highlight of the year for me. You got some moves for Big Tall Guy. You, you did very well, actually. I know, right? You did well. It was good. I missed this video. I'm going to have to watch it now. Oh, yeah. He, he challenged uh, one of the guys that works at Two Guys to a dancing in-store competition. <laughs> dancing with the stars. This, this is Jonathan. It's, uh, it's, Mr. Uh, Jonathan Lembeau. Is it Lembeau? How, how does he say his last name? Lembeau? Lembeau? Yeah. He, he's uh, on Facebook, uh, Mr. Jonathan. Jonathan, yeah. Jonathan uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, I know. It's okay. I black out, too. Second yeah, he did he but, challenge uh, yeah, you, or did you challenge him? How did that go about? Yeah, so I challenged Mr. Jonathan for, uh, for a little, uh, uh, you know, just basically a challenge to that salsa merengue and bachata. Uh, and when we broke that out, oh, my God, it was... I was I was actually, you know, thinking he was going to come in with uh, with some uh, with some pretty impressive moves, and he did, uh, which impressed me, but... Uh, we ended up taking the we ended up taking the crown, and that was a lot of fun for us. <laughs> <laughs> so, with, with that in mind, I, I would have been really impressed if you could have gotten Dave to get out on the dance floor and compete <laughs> with you. Then that really would have meant something. <laughs> that would have been much better, right? Yeah. Yeah. Come on, Dave, let's break out the move. I'm sure he can break out. I'm sure he can break out a move here and there. <laughs> well, I'm sure Dave does like to uh, break down and probably does a little beatboxing on the side as well. <laughs> I pay to see that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Omar, I want to backtrack really quickly for some listeners that um, didn't hear your first interview with us. Um, can you just give us a quick brief rundown on how you got in the cigar industry and, and where this passion for cigars came from? Absolutely, absolutely. I um, it was a, I, I started in uh, June uh, formally selling our cigars in uh, uh, July uh, 2013. And uh, um, prior to my experience in the cigar industry, I, uh, I worked for NASA. Uh, uh, in Washington, D.C. I, uh, I'm, I'm, I managed the budget for science, uh, the execution of a budget for science uh, uh, with, a, with a great team of people there. And, uh, and I've been doing that for a little bit over 10 years. Uh, I decided to, I was telling, I was speaking with my wife, and I decided to tell her that I wanted to take my entrepreneurial skills into something that I could feel a lot of passion with. I've always done a lot of things, um, you know, with with cars and uh, stock market and whatnot, and I wanted to put my energy into branding. I love branding. Uh, I went to school for it. I did, you know, University of Puerto Rico. I, I graduated in an MBA with uh, with both a finance background and a marketing background. So I wanted to do a little bit something with, with uh, branding. Um, and I love cigars. Uh, I saw an interview by uh, Steve Jobs, and he said that uh, 
one thing that actually impacted me a lot, that if you do something that you love a lot, uh, it doesn't ever feel like a job. It's, uh, it's, it's a passion and you do it just, you know, without feeling that message that that's actually a job. Um, so I, 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 I did with cigars, which is something that I, I've always, uh, I've been smoking cigars since I was 17 years old, uh, coming from the Dominican Republic. And getting into this industry was great for me because uh, I was able to get into the right contacts coming from Santo Domingo. Uh, I was uh, I was put in contact with uh, Jamon uh, Jose Blanco. You guys probably know him from Señorial. Yeah. Um, at that time, he was working with uh, Joya de Nicaragua. And uh, Joya de Nicaragua has never really done a cigar for anybody else. Um, so I, I thought that was very interesting, you know, to pursue something like that. Since, uh, since it was an interesting opportunity, there's a lot of other companies that would be, that would gladly do a cigar for you. But, you know, somehow they usually historically happened. So, uh, so I decided to pursue that avenue and uh, we ended up after a great presentation, we ended up uh, handshaking and saying, yeah, I think this could work and uh, and I became that guy. And uh, so, so you know, two years, two and a half years later, uh, fast forward, we're here. Uh, I see some other great brands coming out of Joya Nicaragua, like Sobremesa with Steve Saka. Uh, and, um, but it's been an interesting two and a half years ride for me. So I, I honestly cannot complain about the amazing reception our cigars have had um, and the, uh, and the uh, reception that we've had, you know, coming into this industry by the retailers uh, in this industry as well. Honest day, Pat McKay, the Brewmeister, the lovely lady. I'm here on Kiss My Hash Radio. We are talking to Omar De Fris of Fratello Cigars. And Omar was just giving us a little background about how he got in the cigar industry and his pretty excellent dance moves that he has <laughs> amassed over the years. So, Omar, as you've continued to get into the industry, what is one of the least things you like the least since you've gotten into cigars? <laughs> Travel. <clears throat> the part that I like the least is the fact that I've, uh, I've, uh, I have found myself noting, not, not, not finding those little moments to enjoy my cigar as I've had in the past. Um, in the past, I would, you know, go to the back of my deck and uh, light up a cigar, uh, light up one of my previous blends before getting into the industry and uh, smoking it on my deck, um, you know, with a nice bourbon or a nice scotch or a nice rum and uh, and actually just having nothing else on my mind other than that cigar, uh, that beautiful evening and uh, my scotch. Um, that, has, uh, that hasn't happened until uh, just very recently when I had the chance to actually do the, that exact same thing with nothing else on my mind and that was on New Year's. Um, I, it, was, uh, it was a little bit of a roller coaster, it's been an amazing roller coaster for me because uh, being on the road the way that I am on the road, I work uh, I work ninety plus hours a week, and uh, this is the only way that I've been able to keep you know sort of a consistent uh, um, a consistent uh, a business approach tackling an industry that I am absolutely one hundred percent brand new to. Are you married, um, Omar? I've had to put that time in. Yeah. Are you Are you married? I am. I Kids? am. Man. I got two beautiful daughters. Oh, yeah. I got a beautiful daughter and. Uh, and a five-year-old boy. How do they take all that time? How do they handle it when you've been on the road so much? It's got to be rough. It's very hard. It, is, it has been the hardest thing uh, for me to be able to, to manage my time. I do a lot of face. I might try to do a lot of face time with my kids. Uh, I'm in Connecticut right now. Just to give you an example, I'm uh, at a big event going on on Thursday. Uh, um, I was up to another shop until like 11.30 last night, and, uh, and I'm flying back to Washington, D.C., and I can't wait to, kiss, to see my kids. But... Uh, that's uh, that's been very very hard for me. The, the the you know the family aspect and the fact that I've been able to you know sit in the back of my uh, of my deck and uh, just simply enjoy a cigar without having a thousand uh, you know thoughts running through my mind about what's happening next week, about what's happening oh. in the next you know in the next year or so. I'm sure. Where is your event that you're going to have this Thursday? I'm sorry, say that again. You said you have an event this Thursday. No, I had an event. Yeah, this past Thursday. Oh, this past Thursday. Thursday. I thought you said you had one. Yeah. Yeah, two days ago. Oh, okay, well, there we go. Oh. So we're going to have a little more with Omar from Fratello Cigars. When we come back, we're going to keep going into his rules and his world from the Dominican Republic all the way to Nicaragua and the things that are coming up in the future for 2016 for Omar. And we're going to talk to Jeff Borschwitz from Tampa all the way. Corona Cigar Company. And Corona Cigars and his new Davidoff store and see what's going on there. More when we come back. Make sure you're keeping it lit. 
You're listening to Kiss My Ash Radio with Honest Abe, Adam K, the Greenmeister, and the lovely Lady M. The Oliva family, makers of some of the most affordable yet highest rated premium cigars available. For seven straight years, Cigar Aficionado has rated Oliva as one of the best cigars, and in 2014, the Siri V. Melanio Figurado was crowned as number one cigar in the world. The Siri V. Melanio is known for its rich, big notes of leather framed by a range of coffee, caramel, and woody intonations. So, always ask for Oliva, an unbeatable value and uncompromising quality. Russian standard vodka. Like this, it seems complex. Like this, so simple. But look closer and you see it's both. Simple because it's made from soft glacial water and the finest Russian winter wheat. Complex because it's distilled over 200 times to the principles of Russia's greatest scientist. Simple ingredients, complex technology, bursting forth. The incredible, ultra clean, smooth, and delicious Russian standard. This is vodka as it should be. To affinity and beyond. That is where affinity cigars will take you. These mild to medium cigars use only the finest select high grade Ecuadorian Connecticut tobacco. Creating a cigar that delivers a smooth, rich, creamy smoke with the gentleness of a mother's touch. Affinity cigars have become America's go-to cigar for that flavorful yet unintimidating smoking experience. Visit SyndicatoCigars.com to find your nearest authorized dealer. Cigar lovers everywhere, pay attention! Smoking Cigars proudly celebrates the 10th anniversary of America's biggest and baddest cigar extravaganza, The Great Smoke! Saturday, February 20th at the American German Club in Lake Worth, Florida. Come witness Cigar Nirvana at this epic expo of 45 different cigar brands and almost every manufacturer in the cigar industry. Your ticket price includes a commemorative cooler bag, 45 top-notch premium cigars, all-you-can-eat food station, and sampling of your favorite wines, spirits, and beer. This is a must experience for any cigar lover. Meet and mingle with our very special guests this year. Legendary athletes Ray Lewis and Gary Sheffield. This year, one lucky attendee will win a nine-day dream vacation for two to Cuba. For more information on this epic event or to purchase tickets, visit thegreatsmoke.com. That's thegreatsmoke.com. Order your tickets today. Very limited availability. Smoke in. Continuing the cigar journey like no other. This is a Ma Aurora issued public service announcement. The iconic lion has gone rogue. Breaking out of the original Dominican Cigar Factory is Untamed by La Aurora. Undoubtedly, one of their strongest cigars proves that not only can their factory provide flavorful sticks, but powerful as well. Taking a fantastic Dominican Nicaraguan blend and wrapping it with an oily Connecticut broadleaf wrapper creates a wild ride of flavor from start to finish. Be aware, this animal is extremely aggressive and should be approached with caution. Swag Cigars, offering a cigar for you. From the medium-bodied Swag Pearl Dominicano, the full-bodied Swag Black, and now the new Swag Brown Connecticut with a flavor profile not usually found in mild blends. The flavor profile takes you from creamy smooth to a kiss near the world of section of Palm Beach Gardens, Florida, bro- Florida, broadcasting live from the studio, and we are trying our best to keep it lit on this wonderful Saturday morning. You look like you're on fire. Something like that. 
Uh, we're in the middle of our Meet Your Maker segment. We have Omar from Fratello Cigars. Omar, once again, thank you for being with us. Thank you for taking the time out of your travels to Connecticut to tell us all about what's going on in the world of Fratello Cigars. Thank you, guys. Thank you. So before we went to break, you were giving us, we were talking about all the perils of travel and the works of having to keep a cigar company that's brand new into the market and keep things going and keep the ball rolling and trying to build a brand and everything that's trying the struggles with all of that you keep going I don't know what oh, it is. I did not wake up. Yeah, keep going. I did not wake well, up. Oh my! Have any bourbon in this in this yeah, studio? Yeah, so find something. Do we have any bourbon? Just, oh, can you keep no, going. I need some bourbon. Oh uh, my! What I want to know is, it's 2016. What is uh? What's on the agenda? What do you have planned? Do you have, have anything you can tell us about or? Yeah. So we got a couple of things planned. Uh, you know, for for for. Uh, for a month or two prior to the IPCPR show, we, uh, we're potentially going to be adding uh, uh, a new Vitola under Bianco. I've never been much of, I've never been a fan of just, you know, uh, you know, adding SKUs to add SKUs to my company just to, to see how my sales jump or whatnot. I've been a fan of understanding where my current lines are, uh, understanding how I can continue to grow them. Um, and understand what the what the what that curve is, you know, what that curve, and I, I know I haven't reached, you know, not even uh, not even one tenth of the curve of, uh, of of where my line uh, of where our original line is, and now where Bianco is. Bianco is in its it's in its uh, it's in its baby stage, so we still have to drive that. But uh, but you know how this industry uh, tends to be that everybody wants to see, you know, something new, what's happening, you know, they want a new cigar. Uh, I remember hearing, uh, uh, you know, some other manufacturers, they came out with a cigar, and two months after they came out with a cigar, they were already asking that person, to say, hey, what's new for, you know, for what's, what's new after this? And so it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a very, it's a very much consumer-driven uh, industry that, uh, that uh, uh, personally, I like to, you know, I do a lot of, a, I do a big approach on the business side to understand really, um, where the brand can still go and, uh, and the growth for us is still there on the original line. We're making some little changes here and there um, to illustrate certain things on the boxes. So my little changes to, uh, to make sure that our retailers are happy, uh, happy to see you know, and, and, and feature our products on, on, our, on our shelves and, uh, and, to, uh, and to keep them there. So it's, uh, it's, it's, those are some of the things that we have going on for 2016. With, with that in mind and bringing out new products and having to continually put new things in the market, how involved are you in the blending process and the creation of these new brands? I'm very involved. I'm very involved. I'm going to be in Nicaragua in about three weeks. Uh, I go to Nicaragua, you know, four to five uh, 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 times a year. Um, I am very involved with the blend. We, uh, I, I call it a team effort because we are all, you know, with somebody in the, we, we manufacture our cigars at Hoya de Nicaragua. I think I said that uh, mm -hmm. uh, at the beginning of the uh, conversation. And uh, one of the things that I, Rely heavily on is on the it's on the palate and on the experience of, uh, of some of these rollers and uh, and on Mario and on Juan Ignacio and on uh, and Dr. Alejandro Martinez Cuenca. I give them what what I, I tell them what I want. I I, I have a very specific uh, um, at least I consider myself to have a, a, a good palate uh, when it comes to cigars and when it comes to you know food. It's, well, food I have definitely a good palate because I eat a lot of it. Um, but it's uh, it's I, I I feel like I know exactly what I want. I know exactly where I want my company to go to. I don't know exactly where what type of blend I'm looking for. And that's the reason we released Bianco. That's the reason we released the medium body cigar at the beginning and uh, with a lot of flavor and you know something with that Habana wrapper. And so it was. Um, I know some things. Uh, I know what I want for my company. And uh, the guys at Oye Nicaragua will help me put together and. Uh, We've gone through many, many iterations, especially for Bianco. It took us well over a year to blend that cigar because um, I wasn't satisfied with the with the filler. I wasn't satisfied with the uh, with the kind of wrapper that we were utilizing. And uh, when with the pre when the finished product was out there, people have people have loved it. And uh, and uh, and I think we did we did a phenomenal job with that. With everything that's been going on from 2015 and the success and the rolling out of the new lines. When you look back at 2016, a year from now, what are some goals that you hope to have achieved? For this coming year, um, I want to keep our. Uh, I want to keep one of the, my biggest thing is to keep our product consistent. 
uh, to keep our product to continue to roll out with the quality that we have rolled it out. So our production is increasing. So that's obviously for me something that is uh, that is the number one thing. Our consumer needs to get the needs to get a product that is not clogged, that is not that it doesn't unravel on them, that it's uh, that it burns well, that it's got the flavor that they were looking for when they purchased it in 2013, 2014. Keep that consistency. So that's that's my number one goal. The number two goal for me. Is, uh, is to continue to support our retail partners. For me, that's huge, uh, and I've done a great job with that so far. Uh, we do, we do, we try to support our, our. We have a we have a very strategic approach to our retailers. You know, when uh, when they usually do a first order with us and the second order and the third order, we try to we try to support them along the way with multiple strategies. And we built a, a, a top tier strategy for all of our accounts, uh, our A accounts, B accounts, and C accounts. So to continue to be a staple on our retailer shops, maintain them, uh, um, you know, uh, support them in whatever that they need, and uh, and keep that growth. I, I don't need to. I grew over forty percent last year, and uh, I don't need to grow like that every single year. I just need to maintain my product as a staple on our on our retailer shelves and make sure that my product is consistent all the way through. Absolutely. And you know, one final question before we've got to go. What's the number one question you hate answering in interviews or at cigar events? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god uh, I don't think there's actually any particular question that I, I don't appreciate answering I mean everybody's uh, everybody's different uh, you know Coop I think you're going to have him on the show uh, later at, uh, as somebody who's uh, I've been on this show uh, two or three times already and I and I love being on the show I think there's not there's not a really a particular question that I uh, Craig uh, Vanderslice uh, from Cigar Craig that's a very interesting uh, question that he asked, and I think a lot of our uh, uh, media partners should, can, you know, to, should, should do something very similar, which is, uh, you know, if you were a particular movie character, who would you be? And uh, I thought that was a lot of fun. I think that was one of the things that I remember at least. Uh, but it's not a particular question I particularly don't like answering. I like, I like. What was your What was your answer to that question? And that's always a lot of fun. What was your answer to that question? Um, what was the answer to Tom Hanks? Tom Hanks. <laughs> well said. Yeah, multiple Oscar award winner, <laughs> master of humor and the dramatical scene. Omar, we want to thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to be with us today right here on Kiss My Ash Radio. Best of luck to you in the new year, and we hope you keep it lit with Fratello Cigars all year long. Thank you, guys. Hope to see you guys soon. Hopefully be in Florida in the next couple of months. I'll let you guys know. Hopefully we can have a one-on-one, okay? Fantastic. Right. We Take look care. forward to it very much. That was Omar De Fisa yeah, for Tello Cigars. He was our Meet Your Maker. A lot of great stuff going on from the birth of the Dominican all the way down and making cigars in Nicaragua. He's on the right path. Good for Absolutely. him. Absolutely. So 40% growth. That's pretty impressive. We're going to have to take a break at this juncture. When we come back, Jeff Borshowitz of Corona Cigars is going to come on and tell us about his brand new store in the Tampa area and everything that's Jeff inspired. He's got a lot of great fun stuff to say. He's got a lot of good stuff going on. Cigar Coop is going to come on the show and we're going to have the Cigar Insane Asylum as well. And uh, we're going to see what Lady M has to want to do for the rest of the show, right? Yeah. Yeah. Lady M's on fire. <laughs> on fire. That's really what we have to go on with. But from there, all we have to really say is we hope you're keeping it lit, America. And from all of us here in Palm Beach Gardens, we do keep it lit. Follow us on Twitter at Kiss My Ash Radio. Yes, it's mandatory. Insurance companies have a very unique business model that the general public doesn't understand. Insurance companies make profit only one way. Taking in premiums and paying out less on claims than they take in premiums. In doing this, they oftentimes deny legitimate people with viable claims fair compensation. We know accidents happen. They happen every day. The good thing about insurance is it helps people do the right thing when they've caused accidents. You know, if I cause an accident, the first thing I want to do is make sure the person is okay, the person's taken care of. The insurance gives us the ability to do the right thing. Unfortunately, the insurance company uh, treats people like statistics instead of human beings. And that's why you need an experienced attorney to make sure the insurance company does the right thing. Baker Zimmerman, Injury Attorneys, 800-866-LOWS, BakerZimmerman.com. 
WSWN Belgrade, the new 900 AM, the talk of the Palm Beaches, and online at 900thetalk.com. Change between the United States and Iran today. At least four Americans are said to be involved, including Washington Post reporter Jason Rezaian. The release comes as Western sanctions against Iran are set to come to an end. CBS News correspondent Margaret Brennan. What we know is that throughout these nuclear negotiations, more than a year and a half, Secretary of State John Kerry has pushed for their release. But the U.S. has said throughout they don't want to link their state to the nuclear deal. What we see today is they absolutely were. On the same day that that deal was signed, releasing billions of dollars to Iran, the Americans were released, according to Iranian State TV. A reaction from the wife of captive Saeed Abedini. You know, I, I couldn't believe it. Something we'd looked forward to for two and a half years, and I just couldn't believe it had happened. And once I was confirmed, I just woke up the kids and told them that daddy was coming home. Abedini has been held since the summer of 2012. The Washington Post is reporting that Rezaian should be out of Iranian airspace about now. There's been no official confirmation by the U.S. of the names of those let go. There's also word the U.S. will free seven Iranian nationals as part of the swap. At least 31 people are dead following a terror attack in Ouagadougou, the capital of West, the West African nation of Burkina Faso. From London, CBS's Jonathan Bigliotti reports the attacks took place at the Splendid Hotel and a cafe. The gunmen stormed the hotel and took hostages Friday evening and even rigged the building with explosives. Hours later, security forces launched their operation to oust the militants. They were backed by French commandos and two members of the United States military. An Al-Qaeda affiliate is taking credit for the attack at the hotel and a nearby cafe. And CBS News has learned there were Americans at both locations. At least 27 victims from as many as 18 countries were killed. Four militants also dead. 150 hostages were released. A warning to pregnant women about travel to more than a dozen countries in the Americas because of a virus. CBS's Bill Whitney. Officials at the Centers for Disease Control are warning about the mosquito-borne Zika virus. They're telling pregnant women in particular not to visit 14 countries and territories in the Caribbean and Latin America. The CDC's Dr. Lyle Peterson says the biggest risk is in the first trimester of pregnancy. The illness is usually mild, with symptoms lasting from several days to a week. Severe disease requiring hospitalization is uncommon. Since Zika was first reported in 2007, 26 cases have been confirmed among returning U.S. travelers. Bill Whitney, CBS News. Fears, frustrations, and fury are rubbing up in Flint, Michigan, demanding the resignation of Governor Rick Snyder for the lead-tainted water crisis there. A spokesman for Snyder says the governor has no plans to step down. This is CBS News. You may think being totally blind is the greatest challenge I face, but actually, it's the fact that I'm often wide awake at 3 a.m. and struggling to stay awake in the middle of the day. This is called Non-24, and it affects up to 70% of people who are totally blind, like me. It makes just getting through the day a real struggle. Learn more about Non-24 by calling 855-856-2424 or visiting learnmorenon24.com. Sponsored by Vanda Pharmaceuticals. Looking to save money on Medicare Part D? Switch your prescriptions to Walgreens. With co-pays as low as $1, you could be looking at some real savings. And now you can preview the cost of your scripts before you fill with Walgreens' new Medicare prescription co-pay quote. And that's kind of a big deal. Walgreens, at the corner of happy and healthy. Quotes subject to change and available only for select Part D plans. $1 co-pay applies to Tier 1 generics. A jilted Seattle woman is making the most of the wedding that wasn't. The story from KIRO reporter Rachel Bell. 29-year-old Dana Olson was supposed to get married, but five weeks ago, her fiancé called off the wedding. I was completely blindsided. He just said, I don't think we're right for each other anymore. But she'd already paid for the swanky Seattle venue, the catering, and the band, all non-refundable. So Dana decided to donate the reception to Mary's Place, a homeless shelter for women and children, so 150 of them could enjoy a party. I'm going to have a really terrible weekend, and... It is some comfort to know that at least some other people will be having a good weekend. Rachel Bell for CBS News, Seattle. Voters in Taiwan have elected the island's first female head of state. Pro-independence party candidate Tsai Ing-wen claims victory in Taiwan's presidential election. In her victory speech, Tsai said the outcome validates how ingrained democracy has become in her country. 
Gary Nunn, CBS News. Looking to save money on Medicare Part D? Switch your prescriptions to Walgreens. With co-pays as low as $1, you could be looking at some real savings. And now you can preview the cost of your scripts before you fill with Walgreens' new Medicare prescription co-pay quote. And that's kind of a big deal. Walgreens, at the corner of happy and healthy. Quotes subject to change and available only for select Part D plans. $1 copay applies to Tier 1 generics. For over 75 years, GEICO's been about consistency. As in, we've consistently helped people save money on their car insurance. And, to prove it, we'll air one of our first radio commercials from over 75 years ago. At GEICO, we're all about consistency. As in, we consistently help people save money on their car insurance. To prove it, you can call GEICO. Call us today, call us tomorrow. Call us 75 years from now. That was way more consistent than I expected. GEICO, saving people money for over... Welcome back to Kiss My Ash Radio with Honest Abe, Adam K, the Breemeister, and the lovely Lady M. Welcome back to Kiss My Ash Radio with Adam K, the Breemeister, Honest Abe, and the lovely Lady M. Broadcasting on this beautiful Saturday morning. So we hope you're keeping it lit. Bright and early with a cup of coffee and a fine cigar. I could use a cup of coffee right now. That was one thing I didn't get this morning. Well, that's a shame. I know. I figured you would bring me one, but... We're still waiting on our intro. I know. Where's that? No? Don't know. <laughs> Alright, so I guess now we're going to play this new game we've invented. Is that it? Yes. Oh. Uh, Lip sync? Uh, Lip service. Just uh, created an intro for this one? Oh, oh, just the background noise. Alright, so basically, Lady M, tell our listeners how this little game is going to go. So what we're going to do here, i got to get my, my headphones together. Um, Abe's going to first put on the headphones and listen to blasting music so he can't hear what you are saying. What I'm saying. And he has to guess what you're saying and read your lips. Okay. All right. Do you want me to go first? You want to go? You got it, Dave? Sir, I got it covered. Uh, right. I think you got it covered. Hold on. You can't say it. Yeah, you got to put this. Uh, he's gotta put he's it. gonna put this on, and I'm gonna say a word. The scary thing is, I actually never really looked in depth at Adam K like that. This might be a little. I'd like to hope you wouldn't. It's not one of those things. Yeah, that's yeah. dramatic. Yeah. I, uh, Hopefully it doesn't... Uh, I have muck mouth, so you are going to read my lips no matter what. Well, uh, I have to read yours, though. Alright, well, I have no music I'm playing on. it, I'm playing it. Alright. Don't, like, say it really, really loud. Don't say it really loud. Okay. Not loud enough. I can hear all you guys. You can hear all of us. Is that better? Loud enough. Alright, can you hear what I'm saying? Can't hear you. Hello? Are you saying the word? No, not yet. All right. No. Can't hear you. Okay. Right. I'm going to give, give you me a thumbs up when you say the word. All right. Here we go. Ready? Motor home. One more time. Motor home. Enunciate. One more time. time. Motor home. Poker hope? <laughs> not bad. Poker no, hope. No. no, we were going with uh, motor home. Motor home. <laughs> poker hope. They didn't enunciate very well. When? Yeah, motor I didn't, I didn't know if I was supposed to overly enunciate. Yeah, Is that what I was going with? It was like poker hope. All right. Okay. Lily M's turn. I can uh, hear you, okay. but I know what you're saying. Nick, shout. Here we go. She knows what I'm saying. She knows what you're saying. All right, here we go. Cowboy rodeo. Airport. Cowboy rodeo. Airport ripping. One more time. <laughs> Cowboy Rodeo. One more time. Cowboy rodeo. Airport limo. <laughs> Airport limo. Cowboy rodeo. <laughs> that was so off. That did not work out very well. So now <laughs> Airport <laughs> limo. So now I have to give this. You, you said one thing, rickling. I don't even know what that was. I Airport mean, rickling. I an R. <laughs> All right. So now I have to try and see what Lady M is trying to say here. All right. Window washer. Window washer. Window washer? Yes! 
<laughs> Did you have the music on? Yeah. Yeah. That wow. was a good one. You definitely over enunciated there. So well, that's what you're supposed to do, is, hu- is try to enunciate. Oh, okay. Here, so let me what... do one for Abe. All right. See if you can pick that one up. All right, Abe. But that, that, that also helped. There was a lot of the, win- the W's in there. It's a pronounced All right. All right. motion with the lip there. All right. Have you seen my baseball? Wow, that's a long one. Hold on. Am I got these in the wrong ear? Yeah. Yes. Probably. That, that's probably. This, that, is, that this is five words. It's a sentence. It's what? It's five words. It's a sentence. Oh, it's a sentence. Okay, I was like, that was one long word. Have you, a sentence. Have you seen my baseball? Have you seen my baseball? I know it's something baseball. <laughs> Have you seen my baseball? Have you seen my hat? My seed baseball. Very close. Have you baseball seen hat? Have you seen? <laughs> there you go. Uh, so that is a little game of lip reading from excitement. I had him thrilled. Brought to you in part by John Buran once again. No, I picked that one. I picked okay. that one. That was all him. Great. That, that was, was all the lovely don't, lady. Don't give John credit for that one. So <laughs> jo- is Jeff not picking up the call? Oh. Boy, and Mike Williams is like should be listening to our show unless he's working. He should call call your boss. He had a call scheduled at eleven o'clock today. Let's do some outlandish audio. Yeah, run more outlandish we'll, audio. We'll make sure we don't forget to go to the Facebook page, check out the iconic the KMA iconic recluse poll of the week. You can take home a five pack of iconic cigars from our good friend Scott Weeks. And if we pick your comment as the best one up there, we're, 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 we're voting. If you vote on the poll, the poll is... Would you show up to work? Oh, yeah. If you show up show to work the next day, had you won the $1.5 billion Powerball jackpot. And don't forget also, if you post a picture of the first thing you would have bought had you won the Powerball, you're going to be in the running for a VX cutter from our good friends over at Zycar. All right, so outlandish audio. Everybody knows that nowadays you can't get away with doing anything without getting recorded, filmed, or any... Because cameras are everywhere, microphones are everywhere, it's just the fault of where we live in. And recently, some famous people have been saying some interesting stuff. First up is a man on what he would have done had he won the lotto. People are doing it uh, the old-fashioned way. They're just filling out bubbles here. I want to turn some of these people around and ask you guys, Sir, can I ask you what your lucky numbers are? Uh, I'm going to pick 14, 24, 2, 7, and 15. Oh, those are your lucky numbers. Can I tell you what? Do you know your chances of winning? Slim to none. Slim to none. You're right. Let me tell you. It's one out of 292 million. What do you think about that? I knew it. You knew it. <laughs> your, your numbers are lucky, though. Am I right? So, I hope so. Can I ask you, if you won all the money, what would you do with it? Bunch of hookers and cocaine. Oh, okay, that's not good. <laughs> that's not <laughs> that was that's live not news. answer. That's probably not the answer that we're looking for. The joys for. of live news right, broadcast. Five hundred million dollars can make a huge difference in someone's life. You can't ask, you can't ask those kind of you. questions. Especially not in a random gas station at eleven o'clock on a Tuesday. Oh I, my the guy looked like a thug. I mean, I don't know what kind of yeah. answer she was going to expect from What's him. the next one? Um, is right. it the the fire? Next time there's a fire in your apartment, don't call the fire department. Apparently, you should do this. No. So the girl oh, come downstairs. She come out here party with her baby with no shoes on. I said, Oh, girl, it's cold outside. She said, She said, Something ain't right. I said, Oh man. She said, Oh man, the building is on fire. I said, No, what? I got my three kids and we bounced out. Uh uh-uh, uh, we ain't gonna be in no fire. Not the day. <laughs> wait, wait. Did you see the remix? Oh, find the remix. Some, some, they, they, uh, what do you call they, it? They, they, like, made a song out of it. Oh, my God, it's hilarious. Like they did for that one guy, it's Hatch fa- Kids, yeah, it's, Alive. On, it's on Facebook. Some guys mixed a whole song to her doing that. It's, it's, it's funny. Oh, that's incredible. All right. No, yeah, her facial features. Oh, really? oh no, it's oh, a, the best. She's like, oh, 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 oh. The, the crazy thing is she sounds a lot like Leslie Jones from Saturday Night Live. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. So, uh, if she looks anything like her, I'd be scared. No. Uh, all right, and finally, of course, the Golden Globes were this past week Sunday. I'm sure I know everybody tuned in. I did. Oh, this is a long clip, John. Tell me. All right, so apparently Amy Schumer and Jennifer Lawrence were on stage at the Golden Globes, and it might have gotten a little bit awkward. Hello, I'm J Law. 
and I am a shoe. <laughs> so you can't just give yourself a celeb nickname. It has to come naturally. Okay. Like, what do people usually call you? Usually they just call me a No, no, we can forget <laughs> We can say that, that. that is true. Um, maybe you'll get a celebrity couple nickname. Ooh, like aimed Tom Hardy. Ooh, has to be real couples, not just people you want to have sex with. Ooh, like aim me all the hems where this is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's fine. Anyways, we are thrilled to be here together to present clips from our favorite films nominated for Motion Picture Comedy. Yes. Please turn your phone off. <laughs> <laughs> we are super Can you stop taking pictures? Yeah, Thank it's you. just... Thanks. So hard. <laughs> anyway, we're... But we're thrilled. Dreams. This is totally good, right? Helping children. World oh, yeah. peace. Yeah. Cars. Do they actually call it J-Lon? Jay Medicine, yeah. Jennifer Lawrence. That's what we call it. In all seriousness. It's kind of like the next day with Jay Lowe. Now it's going to be Jay Lowe. Yeah, like they're just like, oh, Jenny, you're so like, they're so pretty and like everyone likes them and wants to hang out with them. Oh, no, they should be fun to be around. They're like, oh, they should be models. Like, You know, the fun thing about the visual is that being more funny. It, 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 it really does, like, yeah. All right, yeah, Colin, that's, that's enough. I feel like we got uh, we got enough of whatever that was supposed if to be. You, if you watched it, though. Yeah. The visual has to be way more It's got to be more than visual. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, I just also watched Amy Schumer's train wreck like four times last weekend with my girlfriends, and it was oh, so funny. Okay. Yeah, the fun thing about the Golden Globes is, instead, unlike the uh, Oscars or the Grammys or stuff like that, they're not in pews, they're in actual booze, and they have booze. So all these guys get lit up and... They're waiting their turn, and yeah, it's in between party. cocktails. Nice. So always a good time to mix cocktails and people on television, right. on live television. It's a great time. All right, we come back. We're going to talk to Cigar Coop, see who belongs in a cigar insane asylum, and so much more. Make sure you're keeping it lit. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of fine cigars. You're listening to Kiss My Ash Radio. I could barely remember, but my first time was on my boat. Winning! My first time was in the locker room at the gym after a grueling workout. My first time was on a cool, crisp morning right on the 18th hole. Everyone remembers the first time they had Hex. Hex cigars are the perfect balance of body and flavor that will have you reminiscing long after the embers have gone out. Visit SyndicatoCigars.com to find your nearest authorized dealer today. Because you will always remember the first time you had Hex. This is Eric Espinosa, and over the years, many cigar aficionados have enjoyed my highly rated brands. 601, Muchello. In the spirit of continued improvement, I have purchased my own factory, La Zona, in rich and fertile tobacco region of Esteli, Nicaragua. After almost two decades in the cigar industry, I have created a brand I finally feel is worthy of my name. Espinosa cigars are made with only the finest tobaccos, hand-selected, and aged to perfection. Our cigars are bold in flavor, yet refined to the palate. Look for Espinosa cigars at your nearest buying tobacconist. For more information, visit EspinosaCigars.com. If you created the Aging Room Small Batch Cigar Line, the highest rated boutique cigar brands of our times, what would you do next? Well, if you're Raphael Nodal from Boutique Blend Cigars, you would combine your three most important passions of your life, Cuba, music, and cigars, and create a new classic, La Boheme Cigars. La Boheme is Raphael's take on the golden age of Cuban cigars. A medium-bodied cigar, rich in flavors, reminiscent of the island he left 35 years ago in a small boat with his family. Smoke La Boheme today. Blending is in our DNA. Keeping Cuba's most coveted traditions for three generations, the legend continues with San Latano. With signature blends by A.J. Fernandez, available in a smooth and creamy Connecticut, a hearty, rich San Andreas box press, Maduro, and a robust, full-bodied Habano. A.J. Fernandez continues the legacy with his new creation, the prestigious San Latano Oval. Using ultra-premium aged tobacco that takes a whole new shape and balance, the San Latano Oval is now available in both a Maduro and a Habano wrapper. Visit your local tobacconist today and ask for San Latano Cigars by A.J. Fernandez. 
The A. Flores signature cigar brands out of the PDR Cigar Factory in the Dominican Republic are a must-have for every cigar connoisseur. Whether you smoke the A. Flores Seri Privada, the AFR 75 at Mundo, or the Flores E. Rodriguez 10th Anniversary Reserva Limitada, you will find yourself experiencing truly unique cigars that set new standards for superior construction, smooth draws, and flavor complexity. Visit your nearest tobacconist and ask for the fine cigars of A. Flores, the hottest boutique cigar maker in the industry. When you light a Davidoff cigar, you set aglow the richest tradition of cigar making in the world. You release craftsmanship achieved by our investment in that most precious of commodities, time. The time it takes to create a Davidoff cigar as it passes through 600 hands before it arrives in yours. The time it takes to age and mature the tobacco which fills a Davidoff cigar, sometimes as much as 10 years. The time it takes to hand pick, hand roll, and then carefully hand check each individual cigar before it is fit to wear the legendary Davidoff white band. In every second of enjoyment, there are decades of experience. In every way, it is time beautifully filled. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of fine cigars. You're listening to Kiss My Ash Radio. Named after the most interesting man in the cigar world, the Nestor Miranda Special Selection is carefully made in Esteli, Nicaragua. Using only the finest Nicaraguan Habano wrapper, the cigar is oily to the touch and is second to none in construction. Available in both a dark, spicy, sweet Oscuro wrapper and a bold, full-bodied Rosado wrapper. For the tobacconist nearest you offering Nestor Miranda cigars, visit MiamiCigarAndCompany.com. Welcome back to Kiss My Ash Radio with Honest Abe, Adam K, the Brewmeister, and the lovely Lady M. And she's hooked to the silver screen, but the film is a sad thing for. Welcome back. This is Kiss My Ash Radio, broadcasting live in Palm Beach Gardens, Florida. I am Adam K, the Brewmeister. With me, of course, the incomparable Honest Abe. The lovely Lady Anne wearing her new sport shoes. Yeah, my new birthday Nikes. Oh, yeah, it was my birthday on Wednesday, on Thursday. Did you have a good time? I had a really good time. I drank, like, six margaritas and... Whew. She wanted to call in sick the next oh, day. Oh, I did. I knew I couldn't. I would never, ever hear the end well, of it. Well, not to mention it didn't help that I told her right before she left to go home that, well, I guess we'll see her sometime around 11 or noon and... I was there early. She wanted to prove me wrong. I was there on time. No, I think the fact that I had taken my sister-in-law out the night before and got home at 5 in the morning mm-hmm. and came into work kind of made it a little tough for her to call it, in. It did, but at the same time, like I felt like that. Like, I was like, I would have called you and be like, I know you're going to just hate me right now. You'd probably hang up the phone on me, but <laughs> no, I, I showed up. But, you know, last night I was in bed at... 8 o'clock on the couch. Probably rightfully so. <laughs> yes. All right, on the line now, our good friend, Mr. Jeff Borschwitz of Corona Cigar in Orlando. Jeff, are you keeping it lit this morning? Yeah, how are you guys? What's up, Jeff? Yeah, been been uh, working late at night and almost missed the show this morning, guys. Uh, I, I know that feeling. I know that feeling. Now, if, you, if you're just joining us and you don't know Jeff Borschwitz, Jeff Borschwitz is uh, the founder, owner, and operator and of Corona Cigar Company in Orlando, Florida, with three mega stores in Orlando. And we got Jeff on the show today to talk about his uh, newest operation, the Davidoff store they've opened up in Tampa. And how's that been coming, Jeff? Real good. Hey, um, we we got it like a soft opening right before uh, Christmas, and we've been working on this store for like the last two years. But, um, you know, it's a pretty big project. It's a large store. has a lot of components, and it's something unique for Corona Cigar because our Orlando concepts are um, sort of an upscale Nicaraguan theme, but this Davidoff store that we did in, in Tampa was a collaboration between the, the Swiss, the European style, and uh, and then you know the Corona cigar experience type of thing. So we had kind of a molding of two different concepts, and it took a while to get everything you know um, you know putting the best of everything together. And uh, real excited to finally have it open. Um, the bar is not open yet; that'll be opening in the, hopefully the first of February. But uh, the store's really come along nice. We're real happy with the area, happy with the neighborhood, and really happy to be in the city of Tampa because it's got such a long, rich history 
of uh, cigar makings, uh, cigar tobacco. There's you know cigar consumers. It's just it's nice to be in the cigar city. Now, is this your biggest store out of all your locations? No, it's it's about equal size to where our downtown Orlando store is. Uh, there's a little over close to six thousand feet inside, and there's a couple thousand square feet outside of outdoor seating. So it's a uh, it's a large store. It's the largest Davidoff store in the world, but it's about the same size as our downtown Orlando Corona Cigar. So it's got you know you know when people come in, some people want to sit at a feel comfortable sitting at the bar smoking a cigar. Some people like community tables. Some people like leather chairs in front of TVs, and some people like to be outside. So sure. we have a, a seating area that's that's you know for whatever people's preferences. Absolutely, it's been a very 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 good area too because we're around. A lot of high-end dining in the restaurants that are there. Tampa's finally gotten uh, a lot of the national, um, you know, high-end uh, restaurant establishments like the Frisco's and, and uh, uh, Ocean Prime and Texas to Brazil and Cooper's Hawk, things like that. So it's a real good area for people to, um, you know, go out on a special night, have, have a nice dinner, and then finish off with a nice cigar and a cocktail. So it's no longer just all adult entertainment everywhere. Yeah, it's not a... That's around the corner of the street <laughs> and the road. So, Jeff, being in Tampa now and only having the soft opening, how has the reception been from the clientele locally? Phenomenal. We were actually quite surprised and pleasantly surprised how many people in the Tampa area uh, are familiar with Corona Cigar and have visited all our stores in Orlando. So it made, um, it, it, made it a lot easier because the folks came in knowing about us. So they have a familiarity with us. Um, the Davidoff concept is a new concept for Tampa. So that part, um, you know, there's, that is the newness for the, for the clientele, which was a welcomed newness, though, because Davidoff located their U.S. headquarters from uh, Connecticut. They relocated it down to Pinellas Park, Florida, which is a, a suburb of Tampa. So when they relocated from Connecticut down to Tampa, naturally, how about if I wanted to have a flagship store right there in the city with that's their home city. So it doesn't have the hundred year history uh, of the cigar companies that are in Tampa, such as the Fuente Cigar, uh, Arturo Fuente Cigar Company or the Jason Newman Cigar Company. Um, and the, actually, Villazon was located there as well, people um, making punch and all the Monterey cigars. Mm -hmm. So there were a lot of established brands that have been there for generations. So Davidoff was somewhat of a, a new brand. Um, you know, new in the sense of Tampa. Now, but Jeff, the, uh, the folks, you know, the folks are, are obviously real excited about the brand. Davidoff is a very popular, um, worldwide, international, top of the line brand that, that is recognized everywhere. Um, but they just really haven't had the exposure to Davidoff products as much as, let's say, down in West Palm Beach or Orlando or Las Vegas or New York. Now, Jeff, um, your other stores are branded lounges. You have a Diamond Crown Lounge, an Avo Lounge, and a Drew Estate Lounge. This is a Davidoff store, and how does that change the business model? Are you carrying products other than Davidoff, or is it predominantly a, a Davidoff-oriented uh, uh, retail shop? Well, if you've ever been to the Davidoff New York store, uh, they have it's, it's definitely got a Davidoff look. They have a global design and look, and they do carry other brands of cigars. Even if you go to Davidoff uh, in Geneva, Switzerland, they will have all the Davidoff portfolio of cigars, which is Davidoff, Avo, Griffins, uh, Cusano, uh, Camacho, Baccarat. So they'll have that full line, but also they carry the Cuban cigars there. So now here in the U.S., they have, of course, their portfolio of cigars, but they also carry other, other brands as well. So the Davidoff store in Tampa is the same way. We have all the Davidoff portfolio of, of cigars, but we also carry all the other um, top-tier brands. Fantastic, Jeff. Uh, we're up against the break. I greatly appreciate you being here. Best of luck with the new store. We hope the bar comes in com well. We hope to be there. We'll we'll be, hope, yeah, yeah, we want to do it Let us know when you're ready. We'll be there with bells on. Well, as soon as we get the liquor flowing, you guys are have an open invitation to come enjoy the place and look forward to having you in Tampa. Fantastic. Thanks, Jeff. Best you, got of luck. It, you got it in writing. Make sure you're keeping a lid, America. We'll be back. You're listening to Kiss My Ash Radio with Honest Abe, Adam K., the Brewmeister, and the lovely Lady M. 
Monitor three humidors at once from one simple device. Caring for your cigars is easy with the new PuroTemp wireless hygrometer from Zycar. You now have the ability to monitor the humidity and temperature in three humidors without even having to open them. Ensure protection by setting simple alerts that will warn you when your cigars are not in the optimal environment. Like everything Zycar, this is backed by their lifetime warranty. Stop by your local tobacconist to purchase yours today. Zycar for life. The Oliva family, makers of some of the most affordable yet highest rated premium cigars available. For seven straight years, Cigar Aficionado has rated Oliva as one of the best cigars, and in 2014, the Siri V. Melanio Figurado was crowned as number one cigar in the world. The Siri V. Melanio is known for its rich, big notes of leather framed by a range of coffee, caramel, and woody intonations. So, always ask for Oliva, an unbeatable value and uncompromising quality. Congratulations, champ, on winning your exhibition fight. What are you going to do to celebrate? I'm going to smoke one of these amazing Leith by Oscar cigars. You mean Leith by Oscar? That's what I said, Leith by Oscar. It's called Leith by Oscar. And yes, they are amazing cigars. See, now you're making me mad. I just want to enjoy my Leith by Oscar cigar, but you're making fun of me. It's called Leith by Oscar. That's two knockouts. Now I get to smoke two Leaf by Oscar cigars. That's Leaf by Oscar. I smoke Padilla. Hear me roar. Living in this land of political freedom, Ernesto and Carlos Padilla, the sons of the lion-hearted writer and poet Alberto Padilla, once imprisoned by the Castro government and whose forefathers grew tobacco in our beloved Cuba, are proudly blending cigars that continue the magnificent Cuban traditions of cigar making. Visit your local tobacconist and ask for the unique smoking experience that is Padilla. One puff of Padilla and you'll roar too. Awarded the 2014 Nicaraguan Cigar of the Year. With numerous 90-plus ratings, the Perdomo 20th Anniversary Cigar celebrates Tabacalera Perdomo's 20 years as one of Nicaragua's largest premium cigar manufacturers. Using only the highest priming tobaccos grown exclusively by the Perdomo family, the 20th Anniversary Cigar has a tremendous profile with layer upon layer of rich, elegant, complex flavors. Visit your nearest authorized tobacconist today and experience the masterful blend of these Nicaraguan puros. Now available in extremely limited edition pyramid size in Sungo and Maduro. Voted the number one gentleman's club worldwide, Why? the Spearmint Rhino is Palm Beach County's most exclusive hotspot. Celebrate Tito on a Thursday, every Thursday, 8 p.m. to close, and enjoy two-for-one Avion margaritas, and special Skeetos bottle special, and complimentary taco bar from 9 p.m. to midnight. Every Monday, Spearmint Rhino is uncovered with free entry during the game. Bucket and bottle specials and $5 change to shots. Located on Okeechobee and Military Trail, come see us at the Spearmint Rhino. The premier upscale gentlemen's club. Since the dawn of time, the universe has been constantly evolving. Now experience the evolution of flavor. Sindicato Cigars, available in Ecuadorian shade grown Carrojo and San Andres Marron wrappers, are beautifully crafted by master blender Arsenio Ramos. Using a double leaf binder and meticulously box pressed, Sindicato Cigars provide the perfect draw to deliver the evolved flavors you won't soon forget. Visit SyndicatoCigars.com to find your nearest authorized dealer of Syndicato Cigars. Welcome back to Kiss My Ash Radio with Honest Abe, Adam K., the Brewmeister, and the lovely Lady M. Welcome back to Kiss My Ash Radio. We are winding through the bottom half of the hour here on Kiss My Ash Radio. Adam K., the brewmeister with the lovely Lady M and Honest Abe. We just got done talking to Jeff Borshowitz of Corona Cigar and his new Davidoff store. It's going to be a very exciting time there in Tampa. Yeah, Actually, we're going to go out go. there in February, probably, you know, February, Je- March. Jeff's a busy guy. we got to stay on top of him, but we'll, 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 we'll lock him out. into a date. We'll get him to see. There's one thing he's always got a stellar staff. So yeah. Once he commits to it, then we'll just coordinate with his team yes. to get it all working, right. come out there and do a remote. And you know who'll be elated about that? Marky Williams. Mark Williams. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure we can get a lot of the guys from the Davidoff corporate office in Pinellas Park to stop on by. I would think so. I think they'd be happy to come on by and say hello. When's the last time we had Jimmy Young on? He did the radio show via cell phone right. from New York. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's try that over again. <laughs> of Lady M not being able to connect probably. Round two. It wasn't your fault. It was They, they were supposed to have a landline. They didn't. It was, it was, uh, it was a mess. Yeah. But the effort was there, Lady M. 
And your bagels made it back to Florida. Yeah, <laughs> my, my bagels. <laughs> it was so my cute. bagel. <laughs> I still I was upset about that. Man. God, mm-hmm. I want a bagel right now so bad. That mm-hmm. They were so good. Abe and I, we got two each, and we only had like because half I spi- of one. Because she spilled coffee. Spilled coffee all over his shirt. She spilled coffee all over me. <laughs> so then I had to go back and change it. I wanted to eat this bagel so bad. So I was like, where did the bagel go? She, 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 she lost it. I said someone must have sent him out. But she ended up packing it with the equipment that got shipped back to Florida. So when we a got week the later. equipment a week later, I opened the bag up. Nice bagels. So the bagels were in there. <laughs> nice bagels. Anyway, bloggers have become a very important part of the cigar industry. And every couple of weeks, we like to invite a blogger to be on. Depends who you ask. I very. Oh, oh I'm gonna talk about. We're that. gonna get there, oh, but gonna oh get yeah. There. All right, roll the intro. Ah, the sun is so bright. Bloggers corner. And I seen the sunshine. These guys don't get out too much. This week on our Bloggers Corner, we are pleased to have William Cooper of Cigar Coop. Koopa Loop, what's happening? How are you today? Good morning, everybody. Hey, Coop, hey. Coop a loop. Coop a loop. Coop. Name that movie. I know you know it. Koopa Loop. Oh, she's no. never gonna. Emily's never gotten a movie reference. What's Koopa Loop from? Uh, ba- basically, it's Will Ferrell when he's meeting Snoop Dogg on stage during uh, the Will Ferrell with. Uh, Is that the recent one? Old school. Old school. Sorry. Yeah, old school. Yeah, old school. Oh old school. Yeah, see, I, this is, I'm, just, I'm totally just yet. having a. P- you haven't seen old school? No, no. Basically, he's on stage naked, like we're going streaky. He's like Snoop a Loop. Come on, we're going streaky. Snoop a Loop. I missed oh. it. I thought it was. I thought it was fun. Coop, Coop did you like it? <laughs> no. I well, I normally get the hang of Mr. Cooper references from that <laughs> TV show in the nineties. Wow, you you're just totally outdated, Emily. She has no idea what TV show you're talking oh, about. Oh, that was a great show. That Hanging was a with great Mr. show. Uh, TGIF. Vanessa Robinson Pete. Yes. She was and, on that. And uh, Mark Cooper. Yeah, did he ever do anything else other than that show? Probably some very bad cameos on some really bad television shows. He was good on that show though. Yeah. He was funny. He, I liked him on that show a lot. So, Coop, look. I want to get right in the schnizzle of it. Because, obviously, it's kind of was an uh, interesting week on social media. Uh, our friend Steve Stockas, he did, had a uh, debate with a editorial cut made by our friend Charlie Minato over at Half I saw you got involved. And I'll be honest with you, I kind of read it a couple times myself. I'm not sure where the part was. I mean, what was it that happened? Did he discredit the... V- I mean, this is, this is a compilation that Half Wheel does, right? And they just take everybody's reviews out, has some kind of system, that, and then rates the cigars one through It gives you a consensus of what everybody in the industry is talking about. Yeah. It, oh. it, it, it's Half Wheel's deal. It's more of a mashup, I would call it, of they take everyone's list. And they work very hard at that. Um, and Steve, I guess, took some exception to some of the commentary afterwards. But the commentary that the commentary that I read, unless, unless I missed the sentence, was that there was a lot of hype regarding the two cigars that they placed one and two, which there really was a lot of hype. I mean, they were talked about for years, and these were two pretty much, you know, integral components of the Drew Estate machine that mm-hmm. had developed over the years that had spun off and done their own thing. Was, did you feel there was something wrong with that statement? Here, here's my take on it. I, I don't think those were the two best cigars that you could say were a cigar of the year. Now, a lot of people liked those cigars, so you can't discredit people for making that comment. I didn't think, for, for example, Steve Saka's cigar, it was only out, really, for my list. It only had about three and a half to four weeks to make it. So... From that standpoint, I don't. I think it, it was too soon to anoint that the the cigar of the year. Yeah. Um, Nick's cigar was very good, but I thought there were a couple of other cigars out of that factory that were better this year. So it's an opinion thing. I think what happens with a lot of these lists, and, and Fred Rui from Nomad once made a comment to me saying people are very becoming very brand loyal, um, and not so much that I'm saying there's a buddy buddy association. But when you're comfortable with a brand, I see a lot of people in the media will go and review that brand. And even Nick are people that media guys have been comfortable with. You know, they've been they've given them good access. 
So those cigars are probably more likely to be reviewed right. than some of the other cigars that are out there. So I, I think, I'm not discrediting what people thought of those cigars. I think they were good, but I think they were more likely to get reviewed than maybe some of the other cigars. Like, I had the Padron 50th Anniversary as my number one cigar. It's an expensive cigar. Not everyone can, can invest in that cigar. No, so those absolutely. cigars may not make it there. No, so I think that's what we saw there, more or less. But, but what I missed was, and I, I'm going to be honest with you, I didn't read it word for word. I think I was trolling on it at 2 in the morning on my cell phone um, sitting outside. But where was the, did he did he put down the other people in the, in the, in the media room? I think that's what Steve got offended about. And I didn't catch that. Was there actually a, a, a knock towards you guys? I, I think, you know, I think it could have been read like that. I think that there was a, you know, I think it could have been read like that. Um, what I kind of commented on there was, you know, when you're you're doing this mashup and you have like 35 to 40 people, that's probably one of your biggest articles of the day. I think you got to be a little more sensitive to that. But in general, I don't know if I necessarily disagreed with what he said. It was maybe I don't know. Maybe it was just I could see the tone maybe that that comes out there with it right. a little. But I don't know necessarily I disagreed with it. Um, but I could. Some people did take it like that. Some people, there were a lot of media guys that were very appreciative that that they were included on that list. Absolutely. So, well, you know, I, I, I would look at it like that, too. You know, I, always love it when, that. I always love it when someone gets stock on a tirade anyway. I, I think I jumped down there and I posted and somebody give him a Snickers bar. Yeah, so yeah, I saw that. you're not yourself when you're hungry, Steve. Eat a Snickers. I only didn't know that reference. I had to show her the commercials. Yeah, show me the commercials. I had to show her the commercials. Because <laughs> I said that reference and she laughed. Well, I've seen them before, but you know what? I don't like Snickers, so I, what, probably when that comes on, I don't pay attention. If that was a Reese's, just close if, it out if mentally. If that was a Reese's that commercial, I would be like, "That's hilarious." Reese's make me yeah. a nicer person. <laughs> <laughs> that thread took on a life of its own, though. It just started. There were all these offshoots that started on it. Then, then the battle, of course, with getting samples came up again, and the battle of sponsors, and it just yeah. it just spiraled out of control at that point. Right, well I, I, my head was shaking. After that's that. enough on that. Let's talk about yeah. what's going on in Coop's universe. You released a lot of lists at the end of the year. You got a lot of information that came out. You know, thirty different, thirty top cigars of the year, a bunch of honorable mentions, factory of the year, brand of the year. Person of the year. I mean, that you put a lot of work into this end of the year. List. Radio show host of the year. Yeah, where was that one? Hottest radio <laughs> lady what? of the year. So between Cigar Coop and Stogie Geeks, there's about 500 cigars that are reviewed between myself and Paul. So there's a lot of content, which is why we do a 30. And 30 has always been a tradition, countdown kind of uh, American Top 40 style. It's how it started six years ago. And, right, and it's I appreciate kind of that part. Tradi- but there's a lot of cigars there. But I always envisioned kind of like, you know, when you have a, a monthly magazine, that last issue of the year is that recap issue where it's kind of that whole look at the whole year. And that's kind of what I envisioned with all the year-end coverage. Um, there's a lot of different ways to slice and dice it, you know, not just from the cigars, but from news stories, looking at the factories and the person of the year, what impact they had. So I kind of felt that that's kind of the vision I had with this all. Right. And for those who haven't read it yet, they can find it at cigar com, and it's a little bit d- down the page there now, because you post a couple of those things from there, but A.J. Fernandez was person of the year, if I'm not mistaken? Yeah, and, you know, person when I look at what A.J. Fernandez is, is you could, I looked at who had the most impact this year, and kind of who, what happened in the market this year that changed, and I felt that what A.J. did, kind of going against the grain this year, Coming out with three really good blends. Um, actually, one was late last year, which was the New World, but the New World Connecticut and the Enclave, six dollar cigars. These cigars are doing very, very well in a lot of shops. People are going back, and I hear people talking about these cigars extremely well. And it was kind of against the grain where everyone raised prices this year towards the ten dollar mark. He kind of went the opposite. Find some value, get in there. That worked for somebody else once before, Nick Perdomo. Oh. When that chip was it, coming it did. out, and everybody was. It, it, I think that was really a, a, a huge turning point for him and company because when everybody was raising prices on S chip and, and, and raising the, to cover the extra tax, or he said, "Well, you know what? We're going to lower our prices." And they even made shirts about it and everything. And I, I think it, it really put him in the spotlight hugely. In fact, I thought about that, Abe, when with S chip in two thousand nine, and we weren't doing. I wasn't in operation then, but that probably would have been Nick. Probably would have been a candidate in two thousand nine when he kind of just. 
he kind of stepped up and said, okay, I'm not putting that price in there, that price increase in there, and he kind of stuck to it. Absolutely. And it was definitely a great year for AJ and all of that. And Davidoff Factory of the Year, if I'm not mistaken? Yeah, so I looked at Davidoff. At the, they have, like, the three factories in the DR, and they have one in Honduras. Mm -hmm. And um, well, one really, I looked at what came out of those soon. this year. Looking at that, as lo that was the large factory of the year, I called it, or right, multifaceted right, right. factory, yeah, and where they have different components. And, and then Lozano was the small single factory of yes. the year. Very true. Excellent point. So you had a lot of great information, a lot of great stuff came out. What was the highlight of all of putting all this together of everything for you? Um, it's just kind of going, the highlight is really just, I'm just so appreciative that people took the time to read it and they gave me comments, whether they were good comments or bad comments. Um, I'm, I'm just real, real grateful of that. Um, I, I never envisioned, there were so many, so many comments, um, whether it was emails or on comments or on social media, I, I, everyone just takes the time to like your post or retweet. I'm just, I'm just grateful, and I'm just saying, I just really, you know, sometimes I wish I could say thank you to everyone more often on that, and I really should because um, it just means a lot. Absolutely, fantastic. Anything exciting? You can tell us quickly what's coming up in the next couple of weeks for Cigar Coop. Yeah, um, we're getting back into reviews. Uh, the Aroa 20 Year Cigar will be reviewed. Mm -hmm. The Padron 1926 TAA Maduro is coming up. Okay. Uh, Warp, Warp Corto. I know Warp Cigars got a lot of press this year. They came out with a cigar called the Corto. Huge really good press. Box press. He was all, that guy was all over the place this year. He was. I mean, at he least was. in social media. I mean, I think he's only got about 180 accounts nationwide. So he's not that readily available. And I think there's only maybe four people, five people selling the product online, but wow, what exposure he got in the social media. But he's media. in some big shops. If yeah. you look at some of the shops he's gotten, and just for a guy who's been doing this really, I want to say a year and a half, look at some of the shops he's in. Yo, know, he strategically, uh, with precision, figured where he wanted to get this product into and did what it took. So, I tell you, I, 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 he's somebody I've had my eye on for about six months. In fact, I just met with him uh, this during this week, and I, 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 uh, I see a very... Um, He's a very intelligent and savvy young man, too. I, I, I see a very bright future for Kyle Gallus. He's just very, yeah, and he's really been kind. To, I, when he was starting out, actually, Sandy from El Cito de Bronze, I was in, the, I was in her, um, her place, and um, he called into the shop, and she put him on the phone to introduce him to me. So I kind of got to really talk to him before he even launched his first cigar, which was the El Oso. And he's just been uh, really kind and just great to deal with uh, from a media standpoint. You know, just keeping me informed of the happenings of his company, so I'm real appreciative of that. Absolutely. Coop, thanks for all the wonderful information you gave us out today for compiling that list of 2015 in review. We know we'll have you back again soon to talk about some more great stuff going on in the world of Cigar Coop and in Stogie Geeks. Until then, we hope you enjoy a great weekend. Thanks for being here. We're going to come back with yeah. the Cigar Insane Asylum, and we're going to try and keep it lit still. Follow us on Twitter at Kiss My Ash Radio. Yes, it's mandatory. Quality and value are always the two biggest determining factors for consumers when making buying decisions. Casa Bella by Sindicato Cigars offers superior flavor, quality construction, and an affordable everyday price. Completely handmade in the Dominican Republic, these value-priced, smooth yet flavorful cigars are comprised of Dominican and Nicaraguan filler tobaccos, and they're available in natural and Maduro wrappers. Visit SindicatoCigars.com to find your nearest authorized dealer of Casa Bella cigars. You know, some football players today remind me of Cuban cigars. They're weaker, they talk too much, and they don't pack the same punch they used to. Take it from Mike Ditka, member of Camacho's Board of the Bold, and check out the new Camacho Corojo line of smokes. Built for the expert palate and fine-tuned for maximum flavor impact, consistency, and quality. Pick one up today. To Affinity and beyond, that is where Affinity Cigars will take you. These mild to medium cigars use only the finest select high-grade Ecuadorian Connecticut tobacco. 
creating a cigar that delivers a smooth, rich, creamy smoke with the gentleness of a mother's touch. Affinity Cigars have become America's go-to cigar for that flavorful yet unintimidating smoking experience. Visit SindicatoCigars.com to find your nearest authorized dealer. From the makers of the number one cigar in the USA in 2013, the Aging Room Quattro F55 comes yet another highly rated cigar. The Aging Room Bin Number no. 1, a full-body Dominican cigar made with some of the world's oldest tobacco in the market today. It starts out smooth and builds up in strength and flavor until it reaches its full potential. The Aging Room Bin Number no. 1, for the true connoisseur looking for a sophisticated smoking experience with balance, complexity, and character. Aging Room Cigars, blending is in our DNA. Cigar lovers everywhere, pay attention. Smoking Cigars proudly celebrates the 10th anniversary of America's biggest and baddest cigar extravaganza, The Great Smoke, Saturday, February 20th at the American German Club in Lake Worth, Florida. Come witness Cigar Nirvana at this epic expo of 45 different cigar brands and almost every manufacturer in the cigar industry. Your ticket price includes a commemorative cooler bag, 45 top-notch premium cigars, all-you-can-eat food station, and samplings of your favorite wines, spirits, and beer. This is a must experience for any cigar lover. Meet and mingle with our very special guests this year. Legendary athletes Ray Lewis and Gary Sheffield. This year, one lucky attendee will win a nine-day dream vacation for two to Cuba. For more information on this epic event or to purchase tickets, visit thegreatsmoke.com. That's thegreatsmoke.com. Order your tickets today. Very limited availability. Smoke it. Continuing the cigar journey like no other. The Oliva family, makers of some of the most affordable yet highest rated premium cigars available. For seven straight years, Cigar Aficionado has rated Oliva as one of the best and in 2014, the Serie V Melanio Figurado was crowned as number one cigar in the world. The Serie V Melanio is known for its rich, big notes of leather framed by a range of coffee, caramel, and woody intonations. Oliva cigars can be found at a retailer near you. Ask for Oliva, an unbeatable value and uncompromising quality. Welcome back to Kiss My Ash Radio with Honest Abe, Adam K., the Brewmeister, and the lovely Lady M. Welcome back, ladies and germs, to Kiss My Ash Radio. Here in the studios of GVC, where everything is top-notch and high-quality all the time. I am Adam K., the Brewmeister. With me, of course, the incomparable Honest Abe and the lovely Lady M. Also our producer, John Barron. Hi, John. Hey, guys. We scheduled all the music this week in tribute to David Bowie. David Bowie. David Bowie. I, you know, I was, I was legitimately sad when he died. I'm, I'm, I know you I'm are. A huge, I'm a huge Bowie fan. I've ever, you're, you're a musician. My dog was named Ziggy Stardust. Really? Yeah. That's saying something, too. Yeah. No, I've, I heard a bunch of, there was a lot of great memorial stuff, a lot of great clips that came out this week. One of really cool one I found was uh, Bowie at the Madison Square Garden six weeks after 9-11 during the uh, concert. For all the first responders. Oh yeah. And the first song is him doing America by Simon and Garfunkel on this little toy piano. Wow. It's freaking ridiculous. You can Google it if you if you haven't seen it, it's fantastic. His second wife, or it could have been his first wife, Angie, she's like in Big Brother in London and right. was in is in the show right now when he died. Right. Though yeah, they had to actually tell her and then she actually did the little room and talked about it dying and then, there was some controversy about it Did you know what it was i didn't catch it really but like she ended up telling people in the show that because they're not supposed to have any contact with the outside, outside world, world right oh. right and she ended up telling people that you know david had passed away yeah i think that that was that i don't know if, I don't think well, especially if you're in london you can be you voted off to. for that for the show like that's a, a vote offable offense like people will vote you off the show for that but i don't know if they would they may make a, a concession in this sub oh i know they watched a little video clip of her in the chair and crying and whatever Sad. Yeah. they're they're gonna have a uh, a tribute concert with a lot of people they, um elton john um uh, a lot of different stars are gonna be doing a tribute concert in late march uh for david bowie so it's gonna Should be really do a live good. remote from there, I would, I would love to do it. I would have been man. Jeez, that would be amazing. Maybe even get you to play trumpet up on there with, the, hey. with all those guys. There's a few. Oh, no, there's no. Weren't we supposed to do some kind of musical trumpet thing with him or something? Yeah, yeah. we can still do it. We're working yeah, on that as a um, new segment. 
Hip hop yes. trumpet. Hip hop trumpet. Hip hop trumpet. Hip hop trumpets. Ugh. There's nothing more hip hop than me playing the trumpet. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. You already know that's uh, going. Can a good we get way. you some hammer pants when you're doing it too? Because that pants, would be yeah. absolutely fantastic. I almost wore my parachute pants today. <laughs> they still make parachute pants. Yeah, it's a new thing. It's like a European thing. That's Are you there. serious? You can. No, oh, it's, I'm dead serious. I have a pair. Where's like the Justin Bieber pants with the giant crotches? In yeah. It? I've seen, oh, okay. It's similar okay. to those. I got you. What do you mean by giant crotch? They have these pants. Just, like a crotch patch? No. Mean? no, no, no. It just looks. They, like, it looks like a huge pair of mom jeans. They're like this. And like, then they have like this big dip right here. Right. It looks like you have a webbed right. crotch. And it's just like a. <laughs> That's it's weird. weird. <laughs> it's weird. I don't. I mean, you storing stuff down there? So you extra sandwich or something? I almost wore mine today. I, I changed last minute. That's so funny. stupid. With that crazy psychoticness, it's time to find out who from probably Florida this week belongs in a cigar insane asylum. Welcome to the cigar asylum. Did you know I'm utterly insane? We all go a little mad sometimes. Where logic and reason cease to exist. These, these stories brought to you by Asylum Cigars, courtesy of Lady M. So yes, Florida, how did you guess? So yes. is Florida. There's, um, the sun <laughs> bakes the brain. 99 out of 100. Yeah. There's actually a, um, on our Sun Centennial news website, uh -huh. there's a blog called Floor... Duh. Like D-U-H. Well, no, there's and also I, like the Twitter feed, Florida Man. Right. Which shows all the headlines, Florida Man does crazy psychotic things. Oh, uh, really? That's I funny. need to great Twitter. Oh, yeah. oh, and I didn't Lady M's got that. a new source now. For yes, <laughs> heck yeah. All right, this oh, was yeah. January 15th. Yesterday. Yo, dude, this is not how you beat a rap. After being pulled over for allegedly speeding into a Delray High School's bus stop loop, narrowly missing students, officers asked the driver identified as Volvic Luis Jean Jr., 18, for his driver's license. Jean then hands the cops his rap CD. Because, <laughs> hey, without what else rhyme, are you going to get a chance to rhyme or reason, up your new And then peels out of the school zone, track. almost hitting more students. He got chased down and arrested. And what was his blood alcohol content? They did not disclose that information. I would just like to, we glossed over the fact that he sped into a high school bus loop. And then told the popos, what? yo, here's my rap CD, and then sped off again. Speed, speed Check out my fat rhymes. Yeah, mm. speed, speed into like a radio station. Why, why are you dropping your mixtape off at a high school? Yeah. Right. That makes no sense. That's, it's, that's it's, it's crazy important. how that's like this thing people are actually doing now. They're dropping off like, check out my mix. Yeah. Even though like nobody uses CDs anymore and it's no longer tapes I got anymore. I got oh, speak of mix, Colin, did you ever find the look for that mix for that lady? Oh, I got. I it. can post it. I'll I post it. Oh yeah, it's hilarious. But it was um. Oh, mash up, mash up. That's yeah. what they call it. Mash yeah, it was up. like the, they auto tune. Yeah, yeah. The, the the lady doing it. It's it was it's it's really funny. I I have one more. This right. guy. This sure. guy. Another Floridian. <laughs> yeah, another Floridian. Um, this guy looks like he went from being a snowbird to a jailbird in no time flat. <laughs> a wanted man. Douglas Pugh was arrested in the panhandle after sending Lima, Ohio cops a flattering selfie picture of himself because he apparently thought his mugshot fell short of being a glamour shot. So he texts the cops up in Ohio where his warrant was a photo of him and says, how do you like me now? Mugshot, text picture. He wrote, here's a better photo. <laughs> That one is terrible. <laughs> and then they track him down and they find him. <laughs> I like his mugshot, but that's actually a really nice mugshot. It's like an 8x10 gloss. That is right like there. a mugshot. It's a headshot. Yeah, it's a nice one. You know, what kind of balls do you have to just tell the cops, yeah, you didn't put a good enough picture of me up there. You really need to do a better job. Who's there, it? this is what you should be using. And by the way, this is my location where you can find me and send yeah, the federal marshals they... to extradite me. There is a fine line between balls and stupidity, and he has crossed over. Yes. The stupid. I, I tell you, man. People are stupid. Social media brings out the best. <laughs> it really brings out the best. Chop uh, <laughs> off my mixtape. I like that. Oh, here it is. Oh, this is a different one. The one I heard is mostly her voice about the music. It sounds a lot like Leslie Jones, I still think. This is good. <laughs> this is I might good. listen to this. Now this is my mixtape. I'm getting ready to drop. We used to eat ribs with that dude. <laughs> <laughs> good, good callback. But all right, we hope you enjoyed this week's Kiss My Ash Radio. We'll be back next week with Tom Pearson of Cedar Spills and DJ from Dignity Cigars. Have a great week, weekend, America. Keep it safe and keep it lit. 
life, liberty, and the pursuit of fine cigars. You're listening to Kiss My Ash Radio. 